It has six speeds, three of them are overdrive speeds. Internal combustion engines make a good bit of power in a very narrow RPM range and typically at a high RPM. Some of these sports cars, it's 4,600 RPM. Your American sedans are more like, what, 3,600? 30, 30, 34, something in there. And so the transmission is basically to always keep you in that very narrow range. The electric motor, the good news is, has a real wide RPM range. Uh, this one's about zero to 3,500, I think, where it makes a good torque. It still makes power after that, but the curve starts to decline. So just as we're getting up to uh, highway speeds, uh, we're running out of torque. Exactly. But through the low uh, takeoff and everything, we've got plenty. Um, I can't, cannot um, guess at, calculate gear ratios that are going to feel right. Uh, yeah, and in fact, I, I'd say it's from right. watching the variations of what's available and the constant changes over the years in many cars um, in trying different ratio sets, uh, that it, it's not just me. Um, it's difficult to predict how a car is going to feel. Right. And, I think, and it's about feel. And I think you get feedback, too, how people drive it, ga whether gas mileage is more important than power, and they mm -hmm. just keep playing with those gearings. I could take that BMW Mini E and change that gear set 50 times, mm -hmm. and I'd That's eventually it. get it That's the good. way it felt good to me. Now, of course, it ain't going to feel good to Brain because he drives, drives differently exactly. than I do. Exactly. By having these six speeds, uh, we've got a little bit of stuff to pick from. We can't predict exactly how this car is going to feel. It might be that uh, the low gears are, feel better, and we use them. Um, but three of these gears are over speeds, or uh, what, what do you call overdrive, overdrive gears? It's less than a one-to-one -one ratio. And what happens with that is that as we get up to freeway speeds, uh, into those higher um, mm, RPMs, uh, we can drop into those overdrive gears and get back down into our torque range on this motor. And so that's uh, a big thing. This is a constant uh, matter of discussion in the online forums. And it, it's sort of a nonsense discussion because whoever's talking about it, it's what car are you talking about? Exactly. What's the weight of the car? What's the gear? Everything. What's the motor? Right. It, each of the motors, motors have a different RPM torque curve. Um, the the cars are geared differently. They weigh different amounts. It it's not a conversation that I can give you an answer and you'll go away happy. Uh, can you do direct drive? The answer is yes. yes. Um, should you do direct drive? The answer is maybe. It depends on the car, the motor, and what you're going to use the car for. Um, but for me, uh, they've already designed a Getrag six-speed transmission for this car, and it's a good transmission, so I want to keep it. And mm -hmm. while we're keeping it, we might as well keep the clutch. And there so, we go. So you got your adapter plate on. Everything's... This is pretty much just a matter of slipping it in there, isn't it, Brian? Yes. in. Yeah, there's a reason why we've got the division of labor set up where I'm doing Arduinos and he's doing <laughs> uh, this uh, drivetrain. <laughs> and that's that uh, my slogan uh, in uh, mechanical work is if it, you cannot achieve a precision fit with a three pound sledgehammer, don't force it. No, you're getting me converted. I am using a sledgehammer more yeah, than I the, used to. Brian's training me not to use a hammer. I've actually got him tapping around on stuff with one now. <laughs> so there's a there's a meeting in the middle. We did make a spare of our uh, shaft adapter. And so there's nothing holds this in. This just floats in here. No, we'll have uh, hydraulic pressure from the other side. Right. So when we made it to the transmission... Our uh, little throwout bearing here is uh, really what's going to hold that in place. And of course, normally that rides on these springs. If you press the clutch, this comes out, um, presses in on the springs, and removes all the pressure from the uh, clutch, which has the uh, splines that fit on here. And so you're kind of disconnected there. Right. Uh, that, that's all pretty normal. 
So we're down to uh, hooking this up with our hydraulic clutch when we get this installed, get it back in the car, get fluid in the transmission and our uh, clutch hooked up, then we'll have a little light pressure enough to hold this in all the time. And, um, and of course, when we press the clutch, we'll actually be pressing against it. And so uh, that's uh, kind of the design. Uh, we don't have anything retaining it there other than the shaft itself, which would bottom out in that recess in our flange. Um, and one of the things that we did when we, when we put all this together is that this surface right here is exactly where it was in relation to this transmission in the original uh, ICE engine. Okay. So this is sitting in the same plane when it comes up. It'll have the same pressure. We make sure the clutch doesn't bind. Everything, that's why everything's the thickness that it is. Everything is the way that we did it, was to basically um, mimic the way that this car, this transmission won't know that there's an electric motor on this side. Okay, so the two critical dimensions there was, of course, being centered on the center of the motor right. and the center of the shaft is number one. And number two, this distance, I guess you'd say from the surface of the flywheel. Right, from the flywheel surface or the flange, the back of the flange To surface. this front mounting surface of the transmission yes. is a critical dimension and you need to be pretty close. Pretty critical. Yeah, I mean, we were, it was, it was 30 thousandths and it needed to end up being at 30 thousandths. About 30 thousandths. That's exactly Okay, right. well, yep. 30 thousandths will do it. Yep. Um, so you can make any kind of adapter you want as long as it's centered and you wind up with the uh, surface of that. Uh, um, that flange surface, really. The flange yeah. surface. In the, in the same place and space and time. Okay. And that's 30,000. On this particular model, yeah, it was 30,000. Well, let's, uh, let's take this transmission and see if it'll slide on there. I bet it just mounts itself, doesn't it? Yeah, that's uh, pretty much. There we are. By golly, it just about did. Can you get a bolt in that, Brian? You can hang on to that for a second. I'm going to try. It all falls on me. And that's the way it'll fall, so we can hang on to that right there. All righty. We have, uh, what did we wind up with? Seven, eight bolts? Uh, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bolts. And what kind of bolts are these, Brian? Um, we've got a we've got a couple of different bolts here. We've got some uh, uh, ten by uh, uh, one point fives again that are a uh, hundred millimeter. M tens. M ten. One point five. One hundred. So we've got one, two, three, four of those that are uh, that are all through the adapter plate and uh, the M tens, except for one, uh, go through and bolt with a nut on the other side. We also have two uh, oh, that, that go into the case. One happens to be a metric eight by uh, 1.5 by 90 millimeters. Mm -hmm. And that threads into the that transmission case. That threads into case. the transmission and it's up here. All right, I'll get that started. Uh, then, the reason I mention this is your original mounting bolts uh, don't work because of this uh, adapter plate. Um, we, uh, we've added some length in there, and so we had to get new bolts. These are grade eight or better, aren't they? Oh, they're all, yeah, they're uh, metric cap screws, and these are all, all nice bolts. Metric cap screws. We've also got one more that is a, uh, again, a metric 10, uh, 1 uh, 1.5 thread by 90. It's the only other one that, uh, that bolts into the case, and I think it's, I can't remember which one it is, but it's one of them over there. And you'll you'll see that it won't reach. Actually, it's this one, Jack. Uh, Here you go. You need this one. I got the wrong bolt. I handed you the wrong one. Yeah, this. Well, is I, I found I found the threaded hole. Well, <laughs> you were right on it. And that's a ninety. This is a hundred. Okay. All right. So, and and what's this length? That's a ninety millimeter. Ninety millimeter. 
And again, that may, and we just made the bolts just long enough so that we had plenty of thread and uh, it was more critical on the ones that threaded into the case because they'll, they'll bottom out. I've got another hole over here. I bet yeah, this goes right through there. Actually, I may not be able to get that 